Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are. Can I start by saying how deli delighted I am that thanks to the wonders of modern science and technology, I can speak to you in the comfort of your own home. And so without more ado, I will press the button of doom and see if we can get ourselves started. Um, I'm saying how delighted I am to be here in the comfort of your own home. Um, talking to you about Park Hill, which was um, a place uh, I knew less than exactly in detail um, until about two, three years ago when a, uh, an alert came to the Civic Society during the uh, production of the, uh, the plan, the local plan for, for Craven District, uh, concerning the, the faint chance that there might be a proposal for development here in the in the heart, what they are regarded as the heart of the town. So I undertook uh, with uh, other members of the society to compile a heritage significance statement, uh, which could be used to examine the, the history of the sites and um, work towards their conservation um, in as accurate a way as possible. So moving through here is a view of the of the town um, from the south across the River Air, of course, Skipton, the ancient town uh, surrounded by hills, um, both the, the Drumlins and the, the, the wider uh, great hills of the Pennines on the um, Airedale Craven Gap. And let's go the high street, a visitor, of course, uh, possibly not in 1830, but today a visitor. Um, uh, can uh, stroll up through the town and uh, observe the features at the top end, which are of great interest. Um, and many of the buildings on the high street have considerable age. Some of the earliest have 17th century remains in them. Others date from the 1760s and the later 19th century. But when you get to the top of the high street, of course, one's attention is drawn to our great castle, Skipton Castle. The castle here, the gates um, belonging to, now I think my cursor can work yet, yeah, the lower parts date from the 14th century, much of the upper parts and this big central block to the 1629. And within the, build, the uh, castle precinct, here is a group of cluster of the towers and this um, terrific architectural detail, which um, is a true feast for the eyes. And of course, the relevance of this introduction is to say that Park Hill has a close and um, historic link to this uh, very building. And just across the bottom of your screen, I hope you can see perhaps um, some names and dates. We must have known names and dates for part, various parts. And um, just taking in um, an entrance, uh, steps and doorway from around 15, 1500, 1655. The great uh, 12th century, early 13th century um, Count of Omal, smaller tower for the entrance, and then the great drum towers um, being built by about 1241. And of course, the crucial point for this evening is that this was slighted discussions or opinions, let's say, vary on quite the extent of the slighting of Skipton Castle. Um, so I've picked up a few references um, in my researches, but I think I can say confidently here and wave my little cursor to show you that um, the above this line here, the double uh, mullion windows, double windows, um, are belong to restoration of around 1650 or so. Uh, so the lower third of these great drum towers survive from the Civil War bombardments. Um, I do wonder whether ever, anybody's ever remarked on whether all the damage, can you see down here, this sort of battered look is uh, partly the result of cannon fire, but um, I'm not, I don't know. And then in the background on the right hand side, areas of 1536 to 37. So there's our castle tour. I did ponder on whether 
I could produce uh, cannonball eye views of the um, of the town as part of this. Uh, but no, I think I can only go with bird's eye views. Um, this is a, a stunning aerial photograph. I think you'll agree. The slighting um, of the castle after the Civil War, after the prolonged sea, uh, resulted in the lowering of those towers that I showed you on the previous slide and the creation of pitched roofs um, to uh, ensure that there should be no uh, flat roofs strong enough to support cannon because during the Civil War period the, there, were castle, uh, there were cannon placed on the tops of the towers, there was a cannon on the top of the church tower and a huge mound was constructed in I think, well, in this area, containing a wooden platform with a cannon, which was the major piece of um, armory, which could shoot a cannonball the length of the high street, if that's about 1500 yards, which I think it might well be. Um, and so that's just giving you a little bit of an, in, uh, an idea of the character of the, uh, the town centre and a little bit of a feel of the 17th century. And you can see too this great ravine of the um, Ellebeck uh, extending around the, the footings of, the, of the, the castle on its north side. But then while you're strolling the high street, of course the other uh, feature to notice is the uh, stupendous Holy Trinity Church. And as I've already mentioned, um, that uh, was uh, crowned with a cannon um, during the Civil War period, uh, which could then uh, direct fire um, towards the west, particularly, which is the route way to Gargrave as well as uh, towards Grassington in this period in the 17th century. But this is a photograph I took from the, I think it's the steps of the town hall, because looking up at that, there is another uh, feature of this head of the town, which uh, along with these um, stunning early buildings like the Castle Inn, but sits quietly in the background. And that is Park Hill. Here it sits, a little blur of green um, amongst the, um, the buildings. It's certainly been mentioned more than once that part of the character of the ancient town of Skipton is that anywhere in the town you can look up and see hills. Um, and here it is um, at the top of the high street. <coughs> Back into the air, slightly above cannonball level. Um, but this is a view that takes in those points. There's the castle, the parish church, the road down to Mill Bridge and we're going to take now a route up Mill Hill and explore this great area here and I'm resisting calling it an extensive tract of land because civic society members will remember that the discussion underway during the, um, uh, the consultation for the plan was whether this could be seen as a local green space rather than an extensive tract of land. The, um, the term attractive land, of course, does lend itself to the feeling that here on these slopes uh, fronted by the castle and the town is the hunting ground of the Cliffords and the Obermals and others. Um, but we argued in our discussions that we could talk about this one particular part of the town as a, a local green space. Right, we've come up the hill, up Mill Hill, we're walking from the um, quite congested town up uh, a roughly maintained path between I feel an unfortunate pair of gate piers, but we won't go into that, but we'll notice that there is a, a wooden gate just here on the left hand side. And a stile. And it's at this point that we start to explore 
Park Hill in more detail. And of course, um, like all good explorers, we have to get the map out. But as explorers with an antiquarian turn of mind, we're getting out an old map. And here is the 1850 uh, Board of Health survey of the town. Now, Skipton was in, now at this distance we can say fortunate, but at the time the unfortunate position that it was one of the smallest towns to have such a congested population in the 1850s that it merited um, a first edition ordnance survey map to um, look at the problems related to overpopulation in very restricted areas. So of course we're used to seeing them for Bradford and Leeds but Skipton in fact had one too because of the um, huge uh, population density in that centre. And the historic town that we're, we're interested in for, for most of this evening is 17th century town and earlier which is uh, roughly uh, extended from the castle area down to the point where Otley Street is today. So here we are, a Board of Health map um, defining some fascinating buildings and structures and road lines, um, including the, uh, this is, here is the road out, northwestwards, um, out of, uh, out of the, the town centre. And here, our road is a rather interesting feature. And the next slide is going to show you Park Hill in a little bit more detail. And just to get your bearings, here is the 1850 castle down in the bottom right hand corner. Here's our walk up Ch Chapel Hill and across um, into Park Hill itself. And here on the slopes, there is a curious triangular feature. It's not, it's not a, evidently a stock enclosure. It seems to be laid out with paths, maybe a garden of some sort. And at the moment, I can only think that perhaps it is um, linked because of this uh, fence line, as I say, this is 1850. It heads straight down to the long, narrow gardens at the back of the house here. Now, this I think was Peter Garforth's house. It's now a restaurant. Um, Peter Garforth, the builder, one of the people involved in the construction of um, High Mill here in 1785. So the hill itself in 1850 presents us with a curiosity. Uh, was there a, was this um, a, a a field, stock field, maybe, keep, keep the horses in. Is this a little viewpoint building? I don't know. Um, let's um, progress up onto the slopes of the hill, uh, noticing that in 1850, there are a very considerable number of well-defined um, field boundaries. As we walk up today, there's a ruined field barn. This is walking up the Park Hill from the south. There's a ruined field barn um, which doesn't appear on the 1850 map. Um, it's later 19th century, I suggest. Um, slate roof, uh, rubble built. Um, so linking to farming and probably the enclosure in the, the fields on the slopes of the of the hill by the later 19th century. But on the earlier slide, I pointed out a curious triangular patch, which may or may not have been a garden and no features. Um, and there is on this slope, this is looking down towards the castle, um, a lean to building, but one with evidently a lot of other aspects to it, very varied amount of stone, curious, Sort of irregular cornerstones there with some very big blocks, vent holes in the back, it has, and then and then a brick brick boundary to some structure. So again, nineteenth century. Um, here's a, a look inside at partitions for the animals, boskins, 
very fine timber boskins. Um, so uh, we see that possibly um, a part of the structures that were there in, in or features that are there in 1850 on the map, um, maybe some rebuilding afterwards. But let's uh, saunter up towards the top of the hill and notice that um, we don't see very many wall closures at all on the uh, this southern slope. Uh, the arrow, incidentally, just to get your bearings again, is the uh, the tower of Holy Trinity Church, just showing there. But an interesting uh, row here on the left hand side of um, a ditch with a, a very pronounced ancient hedge bank. Um, there are scattered across Park Hill uh, other remnants of these hedge lines, uh, which I suggest predate the uh, stone walling that we see. And down by the stile, I think when notice when you come over the stile, you are immediately met by the greenery of the end of a hedge line, which is, is just sort of stretching down in that direction. But it is just a moment now to consider another look at the map and step back a little bit further. The first map, 1850, this is a map of 1757, so 100 years nearly before. There to get your bearings, there's the castle. Interesting waterworks around the southern side there. This remarkable map is a survey by James Crow. I've put out the whole of the uh, description of it. It's the earliest map we've got in our project uh, folder that the Civic Society produced some years ago. And I can just point out uh, where we came up that we came up through up mill, the mill, past the corn mill and look at this funnel shape in the boundaries in 1757, indicating very clearly the flow of um, animals on and off what was evidently an area of common land or open land. In other words, not, not cultivated in 1757. And some curious uh, and interesting labels, Old Park Wood Close there. And I'm afraid I cannot tell you what K stands for, but an interesting group of small enclosures. There are tenter fields elsewhere in the town fields at this date, uh, so possibly linked with that. And you can see the line of uh, Rakes Road and the road to, to, um, to Gargrave and up into the Dales, coming into the town onto Mill Bridge here. And we do have another impression of uh, Park Hill from an early date, this possibly about 1820. Um, and this uh, reinforces uh, the idea that there was a considerable open area of uh, common land here. Um, and um, Anthony Davis, uh, born in Preston, and we have this painting from um, the, the collection at Craven Museum. Here's the, the church tower, painted somewhere uh, around about 1750 or so, maybe. Um, he's, um, so he's, he's showing a very fine cat, uh, group of cattle. He was a good drawer of cattle, I think, a drawer of everything, except possibly the perspective of uh, Short Bank Road here. Uh, can you see it just moving up the hill there out of the town? But interestingly, um, he shows people struggling up and down Short Bank Road too as well. So a reminder that at this date we have um, a very a, an isolated town, high hills round about, and uh, quite confined uh, routeways. Um, he does incidentally seem to have um, depicted himself as um, artists often did, um, sitting quietly with with the milkmaid, um, who will have been out in the field uh, milking the cows uh, before they were brought down into the town. I expect. So 
So here we are, at the very top of Park Hill. And I have to say at this moment that we won't get further down on the, the other side, except in, briefly in, in more discussions of the map, but we're making this the, the top point. And I hope you can see here um, a shallow depression in the field on the very crest of the, the hill and um, a very substantial stone wall uh, I set that feature. It's considerably, the, the hill itself considerably enclosed with woodland with um, on this far side is uh, what we know as Skipton Woods, Old Park Woods, variously described. And this is the site of um, a gun emplacement built here during the Civil War, uh, around 1642-1643, um, in order to bombard Skipton Castle. It's, there are references to it um, in Whitaker's History of Craven, it being um, uh, an earthwork overlooking the castle and overlooking the roads to Gargrave and Rilston, as they describe it. So a, ma a major uh, routeway in and out of the town. And in 1937, on presumably a pretty grim November day, um, members of the Roman Antiquities Committee of the Yorkshire Archaeological Society uh, took a spade to it to examine this feature on the top of the hill. Um, I suspect they were wondering if it was Roman. Um, and they proved to themselves that it almost certainly wasn't. Uh, the, as it happens, the reports in the Craven Herald, sorry, I'm just going to refer to it. Um, this, is, this is a copy, I'm afraid, the, the, the very sort of uh, uh, vague outline is that it's copied from um, a microfilm at the library, um, photocopied and then scanned again. So it's lost a lot of its uh, detail, but you can see there across the line of it, rather neatly described as a modern stone fence. By the way, yes, uh, that's our existing uh, dry stone wall. They dug three trenches, three gentlemen, um, uh, we have their names, Mr. Gill of Gargrave, Mr. North Duffy of Skipton, and a William Somebody of the Roman Antiquities Committee. I'm sorry, I just can't read that section of the, the printout on the, uh, the Craven Herald report. But they dug three trenches. They provided a sketch plan. Um, they, there's trench one. Trench two, I think, is there, and trench three. So through two, two sides of the banks and then sort of fairly randomly across the centre. And they conclude from that that it, that the Civil War was the likely period of use. And of course, it's referred to by tradition, they're quoting Whitaker's History of Craven, which is 1805. And they made some finds. Um, well, they discovered or they concluded that the, the enclosure was made of turf and clay with stones, and they drew a section, as you can see at the bottom of this uh, of this drawing here, the profile of the of the uh, bank. And they um, were very grateful to Reginald Smith of the British Museum for reporting on two fragments of brown glass, which we discovered, um, and an iron two-pronged fork. The fragments of glass appear to have been stratified for the archaeologists amongst us. Uh, the two-pronged fork was in topsoil. And there was a comment by uh, B.H. St. John O'Neill of Her Majesty's Office of Works, or actually his, His Majesty's Office of Works, uh, from these results that it was a Civil War construction. And, and that's it, really. So there's our uh, information about the enclosure such as we find at the moment. So what was the significance and the impact of um, a gun emplacement sitting roughly here on 
just it's just off the line of the footpath. You can see that in the in the tread on this air photo again, um, and the it's a little bit off. Um, and so I've I compiled a, a, for the next few slides a a map here that just refers to some of the major sites linked with the Civil War, um, the, the the bombardment which was hitting um, the the castle and uh, the church tower, the positioning of a, a major gun cannon here which fired across. Mm, sorry, no, I'm not. Quite sure whether I can go back. Oh, I can. Sorry. Ah, oh, that's it. Sorry. Um, yeah, could fire the length of the high street. Um, and I've noted uh, the west approach to the town with uh, uh, next to the church and uh, the positioning of the corn mill. Um, so here is the, the the layout of the town with um, fulling mill corn mill so forth and um, and another emplacement is like a uh, gun emplacement is like to have been here at number seven on sod hill two so these two cannon flanked the approach and let's go on to the next one um, the church itself was made to be part of the defenses of the um, town and of the castle and the one aspect of uh, which, which I've come to understand about the Civil War period is that it, the pictures that we have of dramatic battles and marching is, um, uh, contrasts very strongly with the uh, effect of a siege on a town and, and its inhabitants. And um, the, a town like Skipton uh, could possibly have had siege works um, dug all the way around the outside. Um, and we'll come a bit more to that in a moment. Um, but here's um, uh, it's just some notes on the left-hand side here. There were barricades. I've come across with the history of Carlton. The, 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 the Carlton, there was a barricade across the road. Um, the traders throughout the Civil War period could continue with their business for a lot of the time. But the castle itself was the focus for raiding parties. Um, in other words, there would be um, small bands uh, came out of the castle at certain times of the day and they raided into the surrounding countryside for food, for horses, for equipment. Again, uh, at Carlson, we know that the vicar's house, he was a, a supporter of parliament. His house was raided more than once, the vicarage in Carlson, and I'm sure this information is there for many of the villages throughout the area. Um, and here's just a note at the end to describe uh, the building up, um, the work that Lady Anne Clifford had to do after the, the end of the Civil War when she was working in 1655. And you can still see, this is an old engraving, as you can appreciate, uh, but uh, the, um, this wall, part of the tower was uh, certainly blown out and you can see the repairs there. And of course, there's a plaque on the top pinnacles here from 1655. So the siege was uh, were long and drawn out, but not in it wasn't in activity. There, there was continuous movement of troops, of, of goods and animals in and out of the castle and through the town. And I'm now just going to think about uh, the the impact on, I mean, I'm a buildings person, so uh, it intrigues me to see what evidence is there in Skipton itself. And I think what we will in, in can do is see the evidence in an area of clearance, which is this part of Millbridge. Um, so we've already, we've seen that there's bombardment from the Park Hill gun emplacement. Um, and, and there's just a bit more information on this side of the uh, photograph that we have a population. It varies actually. Sometimes it's about 750 and sometimes about 1,000 is the, 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 the town's population. Doubled during the Civil War um, and 
there's hundreds of soldiers being brought in um, as a garrison. And it gives you some detail there on the left hand side of the ordinance, 30 cannon, bringing out Tudor period um, armor and arms. And that its purpose and its, its vital, the strategic importance was that it was this route way across the Craven Gap. And it stood at a border really on south of the air you have for Parliament. Keithley, Bradford, Halifax, all developing very quickly under parliamentary control, and Skipton remains a, a royalist stronghold. And it's in the second siege of the castle in 1645 that I picked up references to Park Hill and um, the activities of um, this gentleman, Colonel General Sydenham Points. Um, and I think oh, I don't have to read it all the way down, but uh, um, you can see there by 1640, three years into the siege of the castle and um, the, the continuing periods of bombardment and activity um, that uh, we get uh, um, one of the major military engineers of the Civil War, uh, Sydenham Points coming to lead um, foot and artillery, coming over from Pontefract, Pontefract Castle, of course, enduring um, a long siege um, as well. They were camping a mile from the town and uh, the, the captain or the, the general in charge at the castle um, is uh, Mallory, John Mallory. Um, he met them, there was a skirmish, there was battles in, in many of the outlying villages and uh, settlements. But um, on the 3rd of August, they forced an entry into Skipton. The defensive works, there's a reference again to earthworks um, that some of them we have references for. Do we know about all of them? I'm not sure we do. Uh, they kept, got into the church and into the castle uh, with the inventory, but refused to submit. The points ordered siege guns from York. He took position, a possession of Park Hill, and from there he could fire into the castle and the church. So here's a, a major point um, when the uh, when the Park Hill's um, strategic position was so important. And I'm interested with this reference here, we're still in the same period, this uh, Second Civil War, uh, a reference to uh, the demand for, for surrender from the castle, um, that they must, um, the defenders must hazard a storm if they don't surrender. And one of the letters refers to we are in good forwardness and prepared our minds with 500 foot out of Lancaster is one of the, the, the notes that we, we have. Um, this reference to preparing our minds immediately interested me and I nearly put an illustration of the stone collapse um, in Springs Canal. Now, I know it's a long time ago and would we all see it, but it was standard practice for any uh, siege period for a castle to be undermined. Um, that is work by uh, mineral uh, miners, engineers and coal miners. They were um, a, a standard uh, supply for the um, assaulting, uh, attacking armies to set about digging under or to, in order to undermine either by packing a tunnel with wood, setting fire to it, to cause the, the, a tunnel to collapse underneath the building or to pack it with gunpowder. So I'm very interested that the words, uh, there is a range of lines um, at, here at Skipton. And um, it was in December, um, the castle defenders came out, they uh, counterattacked killed five, it must be starved out. Um, again, standard practice, a siege was less 
the rapid activity and more the gradual um, depletion of stocks, depletion of energy and, um, and interest. And of course, during all of this time throughout the town, the um, population worn down, they were being uh, persuaded to come in and work. They were, their goods and animals were being taken regularly to be um, supplied at the, the, um, those in the castle. And there was a movement of activity, military activity, back and forth, up and, and on and off Park Hill, Sod Hill and Cock Hill. Cock Hill being, of course, um, where Middletown is today. Um, and um, there is uh, another gun position, of course. There has been development, um, albeit 150 years ago, but um, very definitely um, a, a, a historic site uh, lost in development there. So in 1648, the order came for the slighting of Skipton Castle. And uh, we moved towards uh, the sort of presumably the um, Park Hill as a gun emplacement uh, was no longer significant, no longer important. Um, however, uh, we do have um, somebody else having a stroll up Park Hill to have a look down on this magnificent view of the town centre. And this was Samuel Buck, um, whose view of Skipton uh, was made in around 1720. And um, you are getting your bearings on the church tower here. He's sitting not far from... Um, Sorry, this is an enlargement of part of the um, uh, of that uh, drawing that he made. A very rapid sketch. He's uh, it includes a picture of the castle, um, albeit of course well after Anne Clifford's restoration work of the 1650s and 60s. Um, but my interest was that he seems to have um, uh, sketched in quite accurately a uh, row of buildings on the east side. And can you see uh, the Red Lion pub here? Um, that's quite well um, acknowledged, to, to acknowledged to be a good representation of uh, the 17th, 18th century hostelry. But then he seems to lose interest. Uh, well, no, we've got a very good cluster of buildings here. So 1720s drawing those good bunch of buildings on the west side of the high street. And of course, you can make out Mill Bridge here. Here's Mill Bridge, so of course, well before the, um, before the canal. Um, but he sort of leaves out this foreground. And I, I suggest that it was because the bombardment had caused sufficient damage for much of this part of the town to be left open. Someone else uh, was drawing and sketching um, rather earlier, and this is Lady Anne Clifford. Um, interestingly, <laughs> she was married to William Herbert, who was actually one of the leading parliamentarians during the Civil War, um, a little known fact. So in fact, when she came to, to inherit the title, he became the owner of Skipton Castle. Um, in 1643. So throughout most of the Civil War, the building was owned by a parliamentarian. Um, she owned all the fittings inside and all the rich furniture and tapestries. He owned the building and the land on top. It must have made for some very interesting breakfast discussions. However, um, moving on, the castle of Say was slighted in 1648-9 and in 1666, so a little before Buck's view, but she had a stroll out. And I include this because it's so fascinating to have a, an early documented, just a sketch. Um, it, there is an implication that it's in her hand. This is uh, kept in the Yorkshire Archaeological Society's collection and is now at the Brotherton Library. And here is um, our image, bottom right hand corner. Um, just a sketch, here's her castle with uh, the, the, the stream passing below and fish ponds here, uh, just uh, the uh, 
across the back, all of that, of course, is lost under the mammoth um, industrial activity that took place um, well after, uh, well, after 1750, well, 1785 for the, um, the high mill being built. And she uh, gives uh, some information about um, the beck that runneth to the mills, the old park, um, I think that's in, in here, old park in the possession of Timothy Banks for the year. And she refers to fish ponds, woods, and the mill here. So a wonderful little description and um, giving us just a glimpse of uh, what she saw when she looked out of the castle windows of Park Hill uh, back in 1666. But returning to uh, Mill Bridge and where I was mentioning the, the bombardment um, and this air feeling that, that Buck in 1720 sketched a sort of open air park. Uh, it's interesting that this part is still not built on um, and that uh, we are able from the information we have of the bombardment to start to speculate on the damage to the town, the impact on the population, the extent of Anne Clifford's uh, work in restoration for the castle and her other properties, of course, all the way up to Appleby. But what was being done in the town itself, a lot of enterprise, a lot of activity to try and maintain um, life in any sort of order through what was effectively four or five years of severe stress. And um, so we look out really on any studies of the vernacular buildings for evidence of this recovery period, which of course in vernacular building terms is the um, sometimes the, the, the great rebuilding or the, you know, the transference of uh, movement from timber buildings to stone buildings. Um, and here at the top of uh, Mill Bridge, we have um, a, a small house, uh, very, staying very close down into the, the, the line of the beck. And uh, you have to go through, through the lovely shop at Mill Bridge when the opportunity arises to go out through into the back door and see the date stone of 1675. So um, consider, not considerably after, but a time after the Civil War, at a time when the, the town would have still been finding its feet uh, being rebuilt. And within this building, of course, there is timber frames, uh, remnants of timber framing and reuse of timber from um, an earlier phase of the of the town's um, occupation. Well, what of the Park Hill today? Um, this, we're back on the earthworks last year. No, it can't have been last year. This will be the year before. Um, a stroll down, here is the part of the ditch a very uh, battered corner of the um, earthwork of uh, General Points's uh, great gun emplacement. Um, unfortunately, it's being um, partly destroyed by a vehicle going on and off, maintenance of stock and the field and so on. So not, not protected in any way. It is a scheduled monument. Uh, with a fairly scanty description of it. Um, but I, beg, I think it begs the question about whether there should be greater recognition and protection physically for uh, this important uh, feature. Which brings us uh, to the last few slides. Um, here was uh, that discussion that I mentioned at the very beginning about whether Park Hill takes up part of a green space or an extensive tract of land. Um, the diff differences being that within a green space, broadly you can see from one end of a green space to the other. Well, if you took all of the land that belonged to the castle and is now greenery, you would go round to uh, the other side of the castle 
um, and into fields over there and it would become an extensive tract of land. So the work that we did as a civic society was to say, Park Hill stands on its own. It has a scheduled monument, it has a rich history. And uh, we recommended that the reconsideration of the um, recommendations uh, for, for the plan, the general plan, was that this should become defined as a green space in the town. Um, there's our, uh, one of our leaflets, Protect Park Hill, uh, it said, um, just overlying the, uh, the splendid crow map of 1757. And there's just a brief note of how uh, we were able to show that Park Hill itself, standing close to the community, having particular local significance, having its own uh, beauty huge recreational value, a sense of tranquility up there. Wildlife, it would be lovely to see um, greater work done on those old hedge lines to restore those, um, enhance uh, the, 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 the planting um, and attend to that. And in fact, there is a move within a U3A group um, to recommend um, uh, some sort of work along that footpath, uh, footpath line up over the hill that could include tree planting um, to um, supplement the uh, uh, Skipton Woods boundary and so on. And as I say, it's resulted in protection for now. Um, we never sleep in the civic society, but uh, I think um, it, was, it was hard work those two years ago, but as I say, it's yielded a rich amount of information about the town. Um, I think time's running on, so you don't necessarily want this, but there is a timeline, which I'm very happy to send out through Mark to anybody who's uh, interested in covering. That's more or less the ground that I've covered tonight from um, the gun battery through uh, to uh, the 2019 uh, defense of it, as it were. And I think that is time to draw to a close. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
Yes, I just want to say thank you very much, Sue. That was a fascinating insight into uh, Park Hill and, and the history and how we can, we can actually get some sort of understanding, a bit of a handle on what's gone on before. And that can suggest to us what we do in the future. And you did mention the U3A and, and some of the things we're planning. And that's one of the things that uh, you know, I'm involved with at the moment. So any thoughts that anybody's got in, in ways in which we can kind of develop this uh, would be much appreciated. And I know this is something I can work with Sue on. Um, <coughs> but uh, I, I think um, it, it is an important resource for Skipton. And um, I think uh, in these, because of the, the, the climate um, concern and one thing and another, we need to, to really value what the green space we have in and around Skipton for all kinds of reasons. And this gives us a bit of ammunition, if you like, to help protect that area, um, not only for the historical context, but we can combine the, um, its use uh, for, for, for recreation, as well as its symbolic appearance. You know, the appearance of, of, of Skipton would be drastically affected if we weren't able to preserve something like um, Park Hill, because it's, it's such a beautiful setting for the town. So, so there's a lot of very strong reasons, I think, for us to be able to maintain and retain um, this as, as a resource for us to use in lots of different ways. Um, the problem we've got, of course, is that it's, uh, at the moment, the land is used by a tenant farmer um, who clearly doesn't own the land. So we, we, you have to, whatever you do, um, you, you need to get the farmer on side and also the owners of the land, uh, who I think, Sue, they're, they're the Jesuits, are they not still? Or maybe anyway, we need to check um, who That's owns nice. what yeah. and um, change that one up. I, I think um, it's still a bit vague as to who owns and can, um, yeah. how we, we can protect it. I can pick up, and I think we've had a question about ownership, haven't we? Uh, ah, the vexed question. Um, yes, uh, two years ago, um, uh, there was a strong feeling that maybe it belonged to the Roman Catholic Church, because historically the land belonged to the, 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 uh, the castle. Um, so when it changed hands, we thought, yes, it's likely it could have moved with uh, St. Stephen's Church being nearby. Could it have become part of uh, Catholic, Roman Catholic Church properties? Um, I've got letters now that show that it certainly isn't the Jesuit order, which is part of the Catholic, is, is a very different uh, 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 group from the, 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 the parish and the Roman Catholic parish. The Jesuit order owns part on uh, Long uh, Lee, Short Lee Lane. Um, they own land that's just around that part of uh, the back of the, 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 the hill um, onto the um, Grassington, Gargrave Road, Rakes Road. <coughs> um, but they've been emphatic in saying there hasn't been any ownership there. The last I heard, and it's just a rumour, was that maybe Skipton Properties had an interest of course, you move very carefully when it comes to about property ownership and who lets on. I haven't rung them up. Maybe I ought to ring up Skipton Property and say, mm. do you own Park Hill? But I could check with the farmer, couldn't I? That would be yeah. one way of... Does he pay the rent too? Well, exactly, yeah. But mm. I tend to stay away from too much mm. present day involvement. But okay, um, and... Uh... Um, I think, Sue, if you, if you can keep us posted on the any details of the U3A group and we can pass that on to our members. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, John Street asked a very similar question on the uh, ownership mm -hmm. of Park Hill. So, John, if that answers your question, that's fine. If, you'd, um, if you have a sort of supplementary or clarificatory question, then either type that in or raise your hand. We also had a question from Paul... Tomine, Paul, can you raise your hand again? It just makes it a bit easier for Malcolm to uh, to see you and bring you in. Paul. Is Paul still with us? I'll say hello to Wallace again while it I'm looks, waiting. It looks as like if Paul seems to have, it appears that Paul's had, had to leave us. Uh, did he, he did send a, a comment in, I think, about, um, thank you. All right. So, 
does anybody else have any other questions? So, well, in that case, I'm going to say thank you again to Sue um, and to our audience. I hope you've all, all enjoyed this Zoom webinar. It has been recorded and we will be posting it on our YouTube channel for people who couldn't make the meeting. I'd like to also remind you that next month's talk on Thursday, the 1st of April, will be I, Shirley Everett, on the subject of Building Stones of the Yorkshire Dales. We plan to hold that meeting also in the form of a live webinar, like we did tonight, again starting at the sun, uh, standard time of 7.30pm. So thank you again for joining us, joining us this evening, and I look forward to welcoming you back again four weeks from today. Thank you very much indeed. Good evening.